Jesus. We are going to read Jonah chapter 1 verse 3. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and he headed for Tashish. He went down to Joppa, where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tashish to flee from the Lord. To flee from the Lord. The theme is where are you running to? What's fleeing from the Lord? Jonah ran away from God. Jonah ran away from God and headed for Tashish. Why was Jonah running away? God sent him to Nineveh. Jonah didn't like those people because he said, if I tell them they are wrong, they will repent. And if they repent, God will change his mind. He will not punish them. So, in the mind of the man of God, he did not want the people of Nineveh to repent and become righteous. Jonah was against the righteousness of some of the people some of the nations. He didn't like their change. In his mind, he knew they were wrong and God will punish them. The church that has people like Jonah is still existing even now. People who are sent to deliver and to help and to support. But because that person is not your friend, you would rather go to Tashish. You will not go to Nineveh. Why should I help the people of Nineveh? They are not my friends. Why should I support them? Now, in John chapter 15 verse 27, the Bible says, you must testify. I hope you understand what it means, a must in the NIV it says you must testify for you have been with me from the beginning do you understand what is a must if you run away from something that is a must you have disobeyed the one that sent you Jonah disobeyed many people that are running away from God John 15.27 says it is a must, you must testify. If God sends you to testify, it's a must. You must testify. Testifying is what God gives you to tell to the next person. The book of Matthew chapter 4 verse 19 Jesus says to his disciples come follow me. Now, some people do come and they do follow. But at the same time, they change their scripture to say, come, run away. Follow means it's the opposite of running away. It says, and I will send you to become the fisher of men. I will send you out to fish for people because you are fishers of men. We all have a responsibility to follow Jesus Christ and to run away from him. Now, follow me is an instruction. At the same time, it's also a responsibility and a role for every Christian. But follow me is an opposite of running away. Somewhere in the book of Mark chapter 16 verse 15, the Bible says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. The word go says, it's opposing the word. Any potential word of run away is an opposition. If I say go, I am saying, don't run away. I'm not referring to running away from church. I'm referring to run away from Jesus Christ. Now, why this message? 
Many of us are forfeiting business with God. The spiritual business with God. We forfeit those benefits. How do we forfeit those benefits? Each one of us is praying and wishing to become the greatest in the kingdom of God. But there are some prerequisites. Things we must fulfill. And we don't know when we run away from those things that we are missing an opportunity to become the greatest in the kingdom of God. I will mention only five. I will choose to mention only five for tonight. The Bible says, if you want to become first, you want to become first. First means closest to Jesus' heart. And whoever wants to be the first must become your slave. For even I, Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, came here not to be saved but to save others. Matthew 20, 27 says, 27 and 28. It says, whoever wants to be the first, if you do want to be the first in the kingdom of God, you need to become a servant. You must serve. We will tell you how. You must serve. Now the Bible says, you want to be the first, you must serve others. You must have the hunger and the quest to attend to other people's needs other than yours. We come from a background in a society where people are used to saving themselves. It's not easy to shift yourself from self-saving to saving others. It's the most difficult task. You have been saving yourself for years. Now Jesus says, you are praying to be first. I can hear your prayer. You want to be close, 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 close to my heart. To a point of living in my heart. You only qualify if you deny yourself. And then you become a slave. And then you save others. The next item. It's Matthew 23, verse 11. The Bible says, this special service of saving will take you to another level. The Bible says, the greatest among you must be a servant. Now, this is bad news because we are all praying for becoming great. But Jesus says, if you want to become great, become a servant. A servant is the person that does useless works. And this person that is called a servant is always attending to others, making sacrifices. But unfortunately, those people that are called great in the kingdom of God, we are apostles and prophets. Jesus himself, even the Matthias, they all became great by the same formula. So if you want this special service, which is called saving others, attending to the needs of others, Jesus says he promotes you to become significant. You become exceptional in the roles that you play in the kingdom of God. But first you become a servant. And nobody likes to be a servant. When people pray, they don't say I must become a servant. But Jesus says if you choose to become a servant, even in the roles that you play in the church, the lower you choose to play a role, if you choose the lowest, lowest ones, Jesus makes you greater. Because before Jesus, what is big is small. The most considerable and substantial things are identified by small things. Now, I'm not saying change your prayer. I am saying Jesus says, if you want to be first, be a slave. Attend to others. If you want to be closest to Jesus' heart, don't attend to yourself and to your own personal needs. 
attend to others. If you want to be the greatest, the Bible says, become a servant. And no one wants to become a servant. That's not all. There is more that you get in being small. Acts chapter 4 verse 33 says, with great power, the apostles continue to testify to the resurrection of the Lord, Jesus Christ. When they did that, when they were testifying, when they were testifying, saving others, attending others, that time when you are testifying, you are not attending to your needs. You are attending to the needs of others. When they were doing that, the Bible says God's grace was so powerful at work in them all. Now, do you want the grace, God's grace, to work in you with power? Serve others. Go and testify. You have got an option to run away and say, no, but if I go and testify. Jonah ran. Because we show Jonah didn't become the first if he didn't repent. He will not become the greatest if he didn't repent. The grace of the power, the great power working in them all. Now, what does this verse say? It says this great power, the grace, was in all members, not one or two. All of them, every person who was there was living in that power because they were testifying, attending to others. If you want the grace of power, attend to others. The grace will come. I am coming to another one. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 2. The Bible says, A minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord preached and it's not preached by man, it's preached by the Lord. When you minister in the sanctuary, you minister in the presence. Jesus is hearing your prayers every day. You want to be in his heart. He says, become a slave. You want to be the greatest. He says, serve others. You want the grace of power to work in all of you. He says, attend to others. Testify. Go out and testify to other people's needs. Now you are asking for the presence of God to live within you. God's presence, you want to live in the visible presence of God. Like 24 stroke 7. Jesus says, be a minister. Minister. When you minister, you only minister in his presence. But if you are not ministering, his presence go away. So, if you want the presence to run away, stop ministering. When you minister, you minister in the sanctuary. You minister in the tabernacle. God pitches himself where you are by the Holy Ghost, not by yourself. Now, in the presence, it's in the shelter, in the shade of God. The Spirit of this message is that you can choose to minister or not to minister like Jonah. If you choose to minister, the Holy Spirit comes and preaches presence and the presence of the Almighty. You only, you only need to understand what you need to do in order for you to get to become first the greatest, the grace of power and the presence of the Almighty. Now, in this world when we came, Mark 10.45 says, For even the Son of Man did not come to be saved, but to serve. Even Jesus, He did not become great, except through service, and to give His life as a ransom, and not for Himself, not for His family, for me and you. He discharged his responsibilities of service. He discharged the fulfillment of the word 
in order for the word to perform. When we came in this world, we came like Jesus to discharge our responsibilities to become service providers. Each one of us sitting here, we have been praying to Jesus in your heart, Lord, in your presence. I need the power. Luke 10, 19. I'm here to tell you, you'll get it. You want to be first in the kingdom of God, you will have it. No problem. But if you run away from the service of saving others, attending others, being a slave, attending to the needs of others, if you run away, you're also running away from his presence. You're running away from the grace of power. Jesus says, all those Jonas that are in the church, when they run away from testifying, from being service providers, from giving service to others, they have no clue. They are running away from a package. There is a package for you. The package says you are first. You are great. Grace of power. Grace of His presence. And I will mention the last one. Now, this one, in Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10 the Bible says for God is not unrighteous he will never forget the work that you are doing for others you are laid by in the love which you have shown towards God's name you are not doing it for yourself to be seen or to be known you are doing it for the glory of the name of Jesus now he says you are ministering to saints God so long you are ministering to say for the glory of his name God will remember your labor don't you want to be remembered for God to remember the labor of your love you need to be ministering to others to the saints when you do that let me tell you this runaway saint Jesus says the Jonah phenomenon Jonah knew because he was a prophet what he was running away from there is a church of Jesus where people run away from benefits from a big package but they don't know they are running away from it they think I'm running away from saving others I am too decent to save others when we came here on earth we we came as service providers to discharge our duties. We are bound. We are duty bound to discharge responsibilities. To discharge the fulfillment of the word. So that the word can perform what it has been sent to perform in the lives of others. We have a duty. We exist to render services. Some of the services are not decent. They only involve to talk. They don't want your money. Testify. Then you receive the power. You receive the greatness. You become the first. Then you live in the presence. God remembers your labor of love. Who doesn't want to be remembered? When God gave us the responsibility, He doesn't want us to testify empty. He has given us a package of what we receive. When you are a service provider, you are just like a restaurant. You will come out and become first. You will be so close to Jesus. You will be so great. When you speak little words, Jesus will honor them. Now he has given you a package. He says they don't know when they run away from me and my core responsibilities, primary responsibilities, these people want to go to tertiary, but they have not been to primary. He says they jump primary. They said, no, 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 primary, no, not me. Uh, secondary in tertiary. Some jump even the secondary. They are too decent. Begin from the beginning. Serve others. That package you have been running away from it. It's a portfolio for every saint. But you don't, unlike Jonah, he was afraid they would become righteous. With you, it's innocence. We are innocent. 
were just like a runaway restaurant. Jesus sends you into this world. You are a restaurant. He says, go pitch yourself there. But give them food for free. When people come closer to you, this restaurant moves away. They need to enter. It's not yours. It's Jesus' restaurant of his word. You are a franchise. You are franchised by Jesus Christ, by the word inside you. But if you are a runaway restaurant, they will not eat from you. And you are running away. And those people are crying. They are hungry of the word. You were delivered one time. You also have been through a primary process. You have been saved. You joined a family in the light. You have eternal life. You are rescued. You are redeemed. You are delivered. You are living in victories. But you don't want someone to eat the same. And Jesus has sent you as the restaurant of his way. And they can feel the smell of this restaurant. And they want to eat. But you are a runaway safe. You don't want them to eat. You are supposed to release for free and talk to them. When you run away from them, you are running away from your package. But when you get home in the evening, you are praying, Jesus, I want to be first. But the way to be first is to stand still and dish out the food. Dish out the food. Dish out the food. The same way you came out and you got your freedom, the same way you got out of your state, Rice. the same way you got your righteousness give others the same food you are now having peace the world has no peace give away yourself one thing not fair about this service of saving others it means you spend yourself you are food in a restaurant it's part of you when you give out you are giving out yourself your own time but if you have to obey you will get that package but if you go and fast and pray to become great and to have the grace of power and his presence and first but you forget the primary you jump to secondary what is done in secondary is secondary standard you jumped preschool even crash you jump in the preschool in the primary you are now at secondary Jesus says you are running away from those benefits but every day you are crying give me greatness I want to be great Jesus look at me I've been praying for seven days hey greatness it's not on the knees it's on you going out and testify. There is a lot you get from the knees. In order for you to remove people from their tears, you must go out. Matthew 2026 20, says, Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, your own servant. This is the duty to others, not to self. Duty to serve others. Jesus says, Do you want to be a great leader? Do you want to ascend the throne? Do you want promotion? Serve others. Go to the church and serve others. And when you are serving others, your things are standing still. You are employed to be a giver, not of money, but of service. You are giving yourselves out. If you want to be great, become a helper. You know what is a helper? You have got all these domestic servants. They are your helpers. And they don't have a profile. All the portfolios of those five points, everyone is asking them, I know. Jesus says so. They are busy asking to be close to Jesus. Deep inside the heart. To live there. But no service when you are a helper, you are only giving support. But you can't turn 
and do yours. And do you commit yourself. You are spending your time in yourself. You are a giver of your own labor. You are a giver of a service. You are a follower. Because what they are doing, you did not originate it. You did not find it. You are supporting. To be an attendant of others, it means no personal duties. But that's the only formula found in the Bible to become great. Jesus is the greatest. He's above your mother and your father and your grandparents. All the business people, all the presidents, he's above them all. But they refuse to give service. I did say Jesus is above your mother and even your father. He's above them. They are not great. Jesus is the greatest. I don't know them, but they are not like Jesus. They are not one size. Jesus is bigger. John 15:27 says, "And you also must testify. You, 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 you. He's talking to. He says, you must testify. For you have been with me in the word. When you are reading, you are with Jesus. There. So he saw you. He said, "Hey, you have been with me. Yeah. You have been with me. Go, go tell others." Bear witness. When he says bear witness, he is saying hold the office of the word. Hold the office of the word. Jesus, if he gives you an office, he goes with you where you are going. The word is using your body. When you testify and you witness, you must not use your intelligence and your intellect. You must use the witness of the presence of the word inside you. I'm here to tell you you are not empty. You know what to say when you serve others. You know what to do. Jesus says, they are running away. But they don't know. They are running away from their benefits. But they are occupied by the word of testimony. The testament of power is inside them. The testament of fire is inside them. But when they are running away, you are occupied by the word and by the Holy Ghost. When you are running away to do your own duties, you are running away from the benefits, from a full package, instead of you receiving the package. You go and pray for that package. And Jesus says, I, I've never, you know, I've never, I don't know. I don't know how people can achieve greatness without saving others in order for you to be first. You become a slave first. But there's a reason why you become a donor. You are running away from your own benefits. But you know what? If you knew those benefits to become first, great power, presence, God looks at the fruitfulness of your labor. If you want them, you will never run away from them. Everyone that ran away from them, they didn't know. Now, John 10, 13 says, the man runs away for a reason. He says because he's not, the, he's, he's a hired end. Somebody hired. He's not the owner of the ship. You are running away because you don't care about the ship. You don't care about your own benefits. Remember the owner of the ship will give you the benefits. You are fleeing away from biblical verses that are supposed to make you rich. When you are great, you are as well rich. When you are first, all the favors of God are with you. But if you are hired, you are a runaway. Jonah running away from the ship because they are not yours. You don't care about the benefits. The benefits are with the owner. You don't care. Because you know why you don't care? Because care inside you has been stolen. There is a thief somewhere that stole that care. You are supposed to care that my things are not well. I need to rise and become great. I want to be first to Jesus. Closest to Jesus. I need the power. I need the presence. I need Jesus to be looking at me. But you are running away from them. Because you don't 
don't care about them. Because the care in you is stolen. There is a thief. Titus 1 7 says, An overseer manages God's household. When you are managing God's household, you are a manager of souls and spirits. You can't say I don't care about them. If you care about them, Jesus releases your benefits. But you can't pray for the benefits. Proverbs 28 verse 1 says, The wicked flee even when nobody is chasing away. Nobody is chasing them away. They are always running away. Somebody stole your care from within you. To care about important things. To care about going to secondary. Through primary. To jump primary. He already said, I'm secondary. Telling God, hey, now I need to start high level things. Jesus, I'm already tertiary. I'm already with, at the level of professors. I don't care about, you know, primary people, the small people. You, see, even the age. Even the, you can see the shadow is small. The image is small, the shadow. I'm here at secondary. I'm here at tertiary. You have jumped something. You are running away to secondary. You are running away because you don't care about being first before Jesus, being great. The power, you don't care. The power must spread to everybody. When they testify, the great power was with everybody. Every one of them was living in the great power. Each one of them. But they went through primary. They didn't jump preschool. They ran away. He says, no. I need to associate with the professors at their level. Don't you see the way they dress? That 28 verse 1 says, even when the wicked run, nobody chases. You find the wicked, they keep running. A runaway saint. That is the culture and the nature of the wickedness. Every runaway is the culture of a wicked person. It's the nature. It's in their blood to run because they are wicked. When they see the suspects, Maybe it's the one I stole. That they are always looking. It's a runaway culture. It's a nature. You take that nature. You become a runaway saint. From your responsibilities. Primary responsibilities. Every one of them when they run. They jump primary. They run to secondary. They even go to the highest. They go to grade 12. And they sit in there. They run away. Then they listen. They start listening at the teaching. There are also other grade 12. They're sitting. It's a runaway saint. Going to Tashish. God says, go. You are standard one. You must go to do. Okay. You are grade one. You must go to grade two. Grade three. Grade three. A runaway saying says no. You don't know at primary. You will become great there. You are a genius there. Then when you rise, you are there. You are already in the throne. You are great. A runaway from primary. When you arrive there, you see, they are not my age. You look. You ran away from grade one. You are in Tashish. And when they look at you, you don't smell like them. You smell like a baby from the mud. And then they throw you out. Even the animals of the world, they say, ah, these are runaways, I eat this. And some people are speaking now as runaways, they are in the stomach of a big fish. God said, no, this is a runaway. They don't want to go through the greatness of the procedure of the Bible. This is a runaway. Eat it. Eat this useless thing. Run away. It's useless. Eat it. How can a human being be swallowed by a who is supposed to swallow who? You and the fish. Who must swallow who? Who must swallow who? Who must eat who? A person and a fish. Who must eat who? 
You and the TV, who must watch who? Some people are watched by the TV. He's watching you. What is he doing today? Because he's possessed. It's run away. You are dead because you are supposed to be dead. You are supposed to be saving at primary. You run away to a TV. What are they doing? He's possessed. Oh, she's here. Oh, okay. Then I'm going back. Yeah, call my boss. Okay, she's home. She's away. Eat. Then they eat you and your things. Then you are in the pit. You can't. No, help me from the stomach of the fish. Why did you run away from the surface? I turn to others. Watching TV is your own needs. You are feeding yourself. You are turning. That's why the TV is watching you. That's why what you are supposed to eat is eating you. Don't you know many TVs are dogologists? They are possessed. I don't mean the image is inside. I mean your TV. But if you change it to this station and this station, you didn't change the cover. I'm not saying throw away your TV. Jesus will deliver you. When you serve others, when you come home, the demons will run away. Listen. I thought it's you coming back. You're greater and bigger. What went wrong with you? You're growing every day because of service. Attending to the needs of you become a child. When you arrive, they run away on their own. No, it's not her. It's not her. I know her. I know her fire. I can live with her in one bed. If in another bed. This one, no. What a long and but instead, you are running away from a snake. Now the snake is running away from you. It's not the opposite. Every run away. Snakes live with them. You kill them in your own bedroom. It can run away. Because you need to be greater first. So that when you return, he says, no, no, no. I'll come back when the owner comes back. This giant. This greatness. Wow. No way. I can't stay in this fire. You will get that fire. To Timothy. To verse 3. He says, join with me in the suffering. Like a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Soldiers don't run away from their responsibilities. You must have an attitude that I'm going into this service to serve. All soldiers are hired. They are hired, all of them. To serve. As a soldier. Not to serve. It's something else. If they run away as a soldier, you'll see them by uniform. No, no, no. These are runaway soldiers. When you are a runaway soldier, no problem. Your definition is in Proverbs 28, verse 1. It says, The wicked run away is their nature. But the righteous, they are bold as a lion. The righteous are bold. They are not runaways like Jonah. Do you know most people who run away from their responsibilities? Jesus has already given them portfolios at secondary and at tertiary. They are big investments. But they don't know that they must go through primary. Psalm 139, verse 7. The scripture I like the most. The Bible says, Where can I go from your spirit? If I was to run away, Lord, where would I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? But some people are fleeing from their presence. Fleeing from their own positions. A portfolio of power. You flee. But you didn't know. That's why you're not serving. You must serve until you feel like you're collapsing. Until your body feels like I need sleep and you say no sleeping. Serve. Go read the Bible. You're going to serve. Read more. But don't read it for service. If you read the word in order for you to go and serve, it doesn't stick. It only sticks if you read it to consume it. Some will say, well, I did run away from your spirit, Lord. 
Because if you are a spirit that will draw me closer to become first to you, I just run away from your presence. I'm here to tell you if you were running away from saving, you will say, Well, I didn't run away to darkness, I didn't go to darkness. How can you run away with that size of grace? The gift under you, the gift in you, is under development. It's under construction. A runaway saint is misplaced. You don't belong where you are now. Ezekiel 45 verse 4. The priests, the minister in the sanctuary. Now, God is the owner of the whole world. You must not minister to yourself. You must minister to the whole world. When you minister for others, you minister before him. Whenever you release the ministry of the testimonies, you are ministering before God in his presence. All the ministrations that you do as a child of God, you are doing it for him, before him, in his presence. You are not doing it for yourself. He owns the whole world. You must minister in the sanctuary. In his presence. The presence is brought by the Holy Spirit. Jeremiah 23, 24. Who can hide in the secret place so that God cannot see him? Doesn't he fill the whole world? He says, don't I fill the heaven and earth? Some people are not aware that they are not where they are supposed to be. To be first in Jesus Christ means to be closest to him. To be great, it's where you are supposed to be. To be living in power, it's where you are supposed to be. But where you are hiding, you are not in power. You are not great. There's no greatness in you. You can measure yourself. Take a wing that weighing scale of the spirit weigh yourself tell us how much you are weighing where you are hiding you are not great when the great stand on that scale they are heavy weights you will see even when they are slender because of fasting you will see the scale it will say 150 kg but when you look at this person you look like 45 kg in the spirit things are not like human they are different where you are hiding you are not in the heart you are not close to him you are not great you are not in power you are not in presence I mean if you are a runaway if you ran away from those benefits you are misplaced you are going to cry Jesus locate me where am I I want to return and save your people because those values that I was running away from like Jonah I didn't know I thought I was running away from how can I be a servant? Jesus, I will look at you. I have degrees. Jesus, I have degrees. I work very hard. I'm a professional. A top professional. Even at work, I command. I have got employees under me. I am the head. So you want to demote me to a servant? Attend. Who will I attend here? They have not been to school. Most of them. I can employ them, all of them, with my salary. I was making a joke when we were coming. I saying, I respect other people's faith. I must not give that example. Some people, they are so passionate. Passionate to become great. They pray and fast. They pray and fast. But when it comes to greatness, to buy his car, you know what? Someone, just a neighbor, his car can buy 10 of your car. 10. I respect that faith because that greatness save others attend to others when you return your car will be great it will buy twice it will be by two of his 
But how do you go there? People think it's hard work. It's studies. It's this and that. You jumped. You ran away from primary of the spirit. You jumped. You are now sitting at secondary. And the image, we can see the shadow. They can even see. They look. And they scratch each other. What's happening? You are a runaway shade. Too many people are misplaced. The Bible says in James chapter 4 verse 17. If there is a good that you know you are supposed to do, you refuse to do it. It's a sin. That's why you are a runaway. I know some messages are not good. But you are running away from your package. That's why Jesus says they are praying for greatness. They want the throne. The throne of a professor that is standing a few hours on top. There they are the students. They want to be in front. They are the students. And they are sitting there. I want that post of that professor. And you saw the professor teaching. And then opening some few pages and he left. You ran away from where you are supposed to serve. And then you are there in their middle. But because they are polite and kind, they don't tell you. You don't fit. They don't tell you. There's a mismatch. But Jesus says they are praying every day. These people, they love me. They want to be part and parcel of the core, the center of my own life. I'm admitting them every day. Those that are agreeing to go, they are deep. Look, there are so many. Look at them. There are so many. If I open the world of the Spirit, okay, you can open your eyes of the Word and your eyes of faith. You, you can see them. They are admitted. They are admitted. They are in sea, deep inside. The heart of Jesus. But they went through the ladder. Ezekiel 33 verse 7. The Bible says the son of man. Son of man. I have made you a watchman. For the people of Israel. So hear the word. That I speak to you. And give them warning from me. Most of the stuff. That you are sent to express. You are supposed to go and give them warnings. And send my sister. The way you are living. You will die. Go and issue that warning. My brother. The way you are living. The Bible says you are a watchman. Between God and man. In between them, you are appointed as a watchman. You are a doorman between God and the people. Testify and tell them. Give them the warning. Watchman, you are a custodian of the people's souls. And their spirits are dying. You are a guard of a soul. You are guarding people's souls. Tell them you will die. Stop this rubbish. You will die. Stop your sinning. You are a steward of the word. In the house of God. You must tell somebody. I am a watchman in the house of God. I am appointed. I have been sent from God. I am yet to say. I have been running away from my parents. I now want to begin to have first. They are all mine. I want to be first. I want to be great. I want the power. I want the presence. I want him to look at you me at the lab of my life. I want the package. I am here to tell you, my mother, the way you are walking, there is another way. It is the way of righteousness. That way, it will not take you to Jesus. It will not take you to righteousness. I am here to tell you, the way you are going, my sister, it will not take you anywhere. You will die in that car. You are enjoying now. You are selling your life. You move ahead. You step back to primary. I've been running away. Living a tertiary life. When I didn't qualify. I want my benefits. I will go back to my father. And say I'm sorry. Look at me father. I want my package. I want the greatness. And the fire. Which 
when I arrive at home, the demons must run. And said, we are in the wrong place. When you are saving others, attending to the needs of others, you release angels to come and attend your needs. Your needs are too many. They need an angel. For the angel to attend to them, you must rise and attend to others. That God we release angels to go and attend to him. Attend to that one. When you attend to others, God has given you the custody of the lives of people, the custody of the souls of people, the spirits of people. You are a God of souls. You are a steward. Don't run away from your own benefits. They are packaged for you. It's too risky. It's too risky to be employed by God as a custodian of the people's lives. He put a door between himself and the people. You are standing on the door. Their lives are dying. Their souls are dying. You are attending to yourself. Your own children. Your own mother. Your own funerals. Everything is personal. Everything is me. And me is mine. And mine. My family. No angel. You attend to your needs. Your problems are greater than you. You can never remove that demon. You need an angel from God. But you must go out and open the door for others to come in. Into your kingdom. Go tell them. I am here to tell you. You will die. Come to Jesus. You will die. Come to Jesus. Jesus is going to use you. Jesus Christ is going to use you. You are a custodian. You are a custodian. And as a custodian, you are hiding. No more. No more will you hide. You must save others. 1 Peter 4.10 the Bible says, use whatever gift you receive to serve others as a faithful steward of God's grace in its various forms. All your spiritual gifts, they are an extension of the original legacy of Jesus Christ and the apostles. That original legacy has been released is now with us. The apostles are not here. Spend them. That legacy is here. The original, the genuine one, it's here with us. Spend it. Not on yourself. A runaway saint. 2 Peter 2.21 says, it's talking to a runaway. I've seen something about runaways. Getaways. I've seen a car called a getaway car. In the, many years ago, when I was still learning to drive around Johannesburg, in the mid-80s, early 80s and mid-80s, we used to receive warnings from experienced drivers. They would say, this is Johannesburg. When you drive towards Soweto, you drive towards the East End. And even Tembisa. When you arrive at the robot, you must slow down and look for the getaway cars. I said, what is a getaway car? It's a runaway car. I said, what is it? They said, no, it's stolen. Or it has broken a bank. It doesn't stop at any robot. And it knows you know it. I have seen it. It will drop every robot. One after. If you are stupid, it will kill you there. You are a runaway saint. You will kill others. 
And when you kill them, you don't decide I'm killing you. You are running away from your package. You have been given custody of people's souls. Just to, you are a door man or a door woman. Jesus is inside. They are outside. You are in the door. You are attending to your needs. You are a security guard. You are a guard of souls. Instead of telling them, come. Come to my father's house. Come. You are attending to yourself. Jesus says, when you do that, you are running away. You are a runaway saint. All those benefits of greatness and being first in Christ Jesus, you will remain in one station for the rest of your life. 2 Peter 2.21 says, I would have been bad. It would have been better for them had they not known this truth, the way of righteousness, than to know it and turn their back on it. They are turning their back on a sacred command. The command says, if you want, it's an option. If you want to be great, then save others. If you want this, then do this. It's very simple. Very, very simple. Use all the gifts that you have to save others. Use. Matthew 25 verse 40 says, Yes, you are a custodian. Yes, you are a doorman. Or a door woman. You are a guard of souls. Now, you have agreed to go and collect all your benefits. You will be first. You will be great. You will have power. And it will not be power inside you. Power in everyone. Which is why when you get power, spread it fast before you die with it spread it fast that's why all of you were anointed Sunday before two days before the bishop left he called the whole church and laid hands on everyone and the seed is here and it's visible you can see the results Matthew 25, 40 says, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you didn't do it to them. Every little service you do, even to a child, even the least in the society, Jesus says, you did it to me. It was me inside that bed. It was me inside that. That's why you get greatness. You are saving the great, the lowly, the poor. Even the least jobs. One Corinthians chapter three verse six says, "All you do is to plant." It says, "I have planted, Apollos watered, but God made it grow. God gave it the increase." It's not your responsibility to go and change the hearts of people that are outside the kingdom. It's the responsibility of God. All you need to do is to say, hey, your sins can be forgiven. You don't need to say too much. Hey, Jesus is the name. Hey, your sins can be forgiven. And that's a which sins? That seed that you have left there, just to say your sins can be forgiven. There is a forgiver. His name is Jesus. That seed, someone is going to water it, not you. Jesus will send someone. And then Jesus will grow it. You have left a seed to tell a funny one. Somebody, you know, you tell that person, hey, you can be forgiven. Your sins can be forgiven. You tell others, this is going too much. My sister, you are too young to play like this. You are a baby. You will die. That seed, someone, Jesus will send another one. He will make it grow. And the conscience will eat that person. You will sit with this person in the church. That's all that you need to do. Matthew 10.42 says, if you give a cup of cold water into one of these little ones, even my disciples, truly I tell you that that person will not lose their reward. Now, that's very simple. Glass. Jesus is too simple. Matthew 25.45, whatever you did, whatever you did not do for those ones, 
Those were the people that were being thrown out of the kingdom. They have served God for many years in the church. But they ran away from primary. They loved high level education. They ran away from primary. They when they started from grade 12. And then they went tertiary. When they arrived, and Jesus, they come to Jesus and say, ah, we are those. We are those that used to do the following. He said to them, whatever you did not do to that one, you didn't do it to me. Go. Go. So, no, I never saw you. Said, no, I never saw you, Jesus. Where were you? He said, you remember I met you that day. Whatever you didn't do it, you didn't do it to me. Go. Rubbish, go. I said, no, I can't be rubbish, Jesus. I was an elder, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, I was a pastor. Jesus, when I prayed for the people, don't you remember at the tent? I am the one that was doing deliverance. Don't you remember? He said, I came there. Whatever you didn't do, you kicked me out of your tent. Mark 16, 15. Mark 16, 15. Go ye, each one of us, into the whole world. When you arrive, just tell them your seeds can be forgiven. Not too much. Don't talk too much. And start A to Z. Because you can spoil a lot by talking too much. Your seeds can be forgiven. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Then you quote one verse. Then Not too much. Verse one. Lord. Verse Lord. Your sins can be forgiven. That seed will stay there. You go again. Your sins can be forgiven. Mine are forgiven. I was a sinner. Your sins can be forgiven. I was a sinner. Look now, I'm shining. This case. The devil will kill you. Come to Jesus. Hey, the devil will kill you. Come to Jesus. Simple and to the point. You are not supposed to convert that person or convince. Don't convince anybody. He is not your job. Plant the seed. Apollo is coming. And God is coming to grow it up. When they sleep, those words become their few and to the point. So many people are praying. I want to become an apostle. I want to become an apostle, Jesus. I want to go and teach as an apostle. You are a tertiary. Apostle is the highest. Serve others. Attend to others. I'm speaking to the prophets that are here. There are apostles sitting here. And prophets and evangelists. Pastors and teachers. Preachers. I'm telling you. Go, preach, and teach all nations. Matthew 28:19 says, "Go, teach and preach to all nations." Yes. When you do it from the little beginning, Jesus saved my life. I was a sinner. Jesus saved my life. That on its own, it's a seed. You don't need to condemn anybody. I was a sinner. I am new. I am saved. That's why I behave like this. That seed. Apollo is coming to go in water. And God is coming to make it grow. You have done your job. You told somebody, you remember me? Hey, I had problems. I was not sure whether I was a Christian or not a Christian. Now I have found the true Christ following Jesus. When you say so, the seed will stay. Jesus will hunt for that seed that you told that person. Luke 2447. Repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. The remission of sins. Preach forgiveness. Preach forgiveness. Yourself, your own forgiveness. Preach to others that you are forgiven. You are hiding because you are a runaway saint. You are a runaway saint. Preach forgiveness. I am forgiven. I used to preach by a t shirt. And everybody asked me. Not one. Not 
If they didn't, I will take another one from the pocket. I lose one. And say, hey, I take. And say, what is it? Then I tell him, my seeds are forgiven. I was like you, don't you remember? And all of them, whenever I see Adam not getting a chance, I will pray. Tell him to ask me, what is this thing on the shirt? Tell him. I also saw it at the back of the Tell him to Then the Holy Spirit will enter. Then he will say, hey, I saw it last time. He said, you can have it. It's a sticker. It's a sticker. I was like you, don't you remember? I was in the church. Playing in the church. I was not aware. I found Jesus. Another kind of Jesus. And I am telling a Christian who is in the church, who is an elder in a church that I know, where I was, when we in ministry, says you. And then he looked at me. So are you saying, I said yes. I'm saying, he's saying come to Jesus now. He has fire. He will burn your things. He will even burn your witches. He will burn your house. He will burn, burn everything. One of them said, hey, I thought you were intelligent. Hey, today you proved. Right? I had a lot of confidence. What is this you're talking about? I said you will follow me. In the fire. Go preach forgiveness. Forgiveness. Preach it in the name of Jesus to all nations. Don't begin in Jerusalem. Begin there where you are. And tell, I am forgiven. My sins are forgiven. I am new. Where I live, we have bombs of fire. Tell them the bombs. We call them in the name of Jesus. And the rain of fire. And the blood of Jesus. Then because they don't know, they will say, what does he do? You are saying, Jesus, locate me. Locate me, Jesus. Locate me, Lord. Locate me, Lord. Locate me, Lord. I am a gatekeeper that was running away from my benefits. I was supposed to be very far. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says you shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You will be my messengers. You will be my witnesses. You will be my first army. You will be my first army in the new dispensation. You will be the fisher of men by your own testimony without provoking others. When you tell anybody about your life, the grace is that they get convicted. If you tell anybody about yourself, they get convicted. And then that seed, Apollo is coming. God is following. Then you have returned. You don't say, I want to be located and return. Matthew chapter 11 verse 12 says, From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God has suffered violence. Only the violent took it by force. By force. By force. By force. He said, I don't feel like talking. But I feel like telling them, I was once a sinner, but I'm forgiven. I am new. When that conviction, the seed is planted, I'm here to tell you, one day, God will give you rest. Hebrews 4.10 says, whoever has entered God's rest has also rested from his works. And also from as much as he will give you rest from witnessing. You will witness only primary, few primary events. You will promote you to secondary. Then you don't need to witness. You do some few things here and there in the church. Then he promotes you to tertiary. Then you are going higher. You, are going, you will get rest. No one stays at primary for life. Nobody. I've never seen anyone who has been at primary for life. You get promoted. Philip went down to the city in Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah there. Here you are proclaiming the Messiah through your own salvation, through your own testimonies. This is what happened to me. By the grace of reversal, this is what happened. The grace of reversal, this is what happened. Whatever Jesus did for you, it's a seed. He wants you to plant. You are a custodian of souls. You are a doorkeeper, a watchman like Ezekiel. A watchman 
is the one whom the owner go and ask what happened because you are there find courage with the great power the apostles continue to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ when they did that God's grace God's grace was so powerful at work they had the grace we have the grace at work but it's supposed to cover each one of us what is the point of having a grace and it doesn't work for the church the grace of power must work for the whole church only when they will testify the Bible says they were testifying the resurrection of the Lord. You are testifying your own personal resurrection, your own personal life. God's grace, so powerful, was at work. Each one of them, that grace worked for each one of them. What is the point of us having a grace that works for few. What is the point? That's why Jesus says, even open for their personal problems, they must submit them. You are an individual. You are not a crowd. You must benefit. But most of us had forfeited because we were running away. We had forfeited too much. We need to make sacrifices, not for ourselves. We want to become apostles and prophets. Jesus went through the same. He was a servant. Even washed the feet. Jesus, God, He made those feet. He made the people and the feet from the dust. He washed them. He washed the feet that He made of a human being the gap between Jesus and human being is so big but God bowed God stooped he stooped to wash the feet because he knew that is the primary for him to go to greatness that is the primary for him to be first before the father he knew that if I don't go through this primary I will not be close to my father but for me to be close to my father in John 17.10 I took that scripture to God to Jesus Christ and I said Jesus I, I need clarification are you saying all the glory that the father gave so you gave it away he said yes it's written John 17 read it carefully I said father the glory you gave me I gave it away so the father gave you glory and you gave it away he said yes and I said so verse 10 now I'm asking what do you mean when you say all the glory that you have you received it through the disciples when he was giving away to people, he was creating a channel, a conduit by which his glory will come. Because the one that he, gave, he was given, all of it he gave it away. But the pathways he used to give, when God gave him the glory, it didn't come from God to Jesus. It came from God to the disciples, to him. But there was no connection between him and the disciples. He created a connection by giving him his own glory. So that root is what is given Jesus the glory he, in throne he now. He said, yes. How did you discover it? No one has asked me that question. I said, how can you give away all of it? And then you say what you have. I have received it through them. He said, through all the glory I have, it came through them to me. He, he created a way to the Father. Between disciples and the Father, there was a conduit. That's why Jesus stood far and said, Father, the people that you gave me, that were yours, I found there was a connection between the two of you. You gave them to me. The same ones that were connected to you, there was already a connection. That pipe existed and the pipe he created by giving away his own. He gave away his glory. He gave away. That's why he bowed. If Jesus had the glory inside him, there was no way he would bow. He will never bow. 
he bent and stooped for a prostitute and wrote down on the ground for a woman from adultery. He knew he was God. He touched the ground and started writing to save an adulterer. But he was God. He was given the glory when he came and he gave it away. When it came, it became eternal. 